this is an aeroponics 101 course and I'm going to show you the right way to put together a simple aeroponics system. I see a lot of systems on the internet that use a water pump in, a, in an accumulator tank and then a solenoid and they come out these little mister nozzles, things that you can buy on, the, on Amazon. And the problem with that type of system is that the mister nozzles, um, the outlet is too small, so they get clogged frequently. Second, um, there is no oxygen introduced into the system, so the roots uh, don't have oxygen. Third, the droplet particles are too big. You have to use an air compressor, and you have to use a special nozzle, okay? So, the, the, type of, the type of nozzles, they have both an air input and a liquid input. So I'm gonna show you how I put together this system. It's pretty simple. You got the air compressor down here. Um, it's, it, go, it fills the tank up to about 100 PSI. And then there's a second uh, regulator knob. Um, and this is how much pressure you want coming out of the nozzles. And you have to figure that out by when the nozzles are on, the pressure drops. And so you adjust to the pressure that you want at each nozzle. For these nozzles, uh, they require 45 PSI. So because I'm using two, I'm, I got it up at 60. So once it's flowing, um, it, it drops down to, to 45, which is optimal. Okay, so you get the air compressor. Uh, you need special nozzles. So these are the nozzles that I have. I bought these from a company called AeroScience and they're based in Santa Rosa. And you can see here that there's an air input and then this is the liquid input. And as the air is flowing through, it siphons, it pulls on this and the liquid comes out and it mists. Um, the, the droplet particles are really small. It almost looks like smoke. So you can see they're going right now. See this mist coming out the side of the box? You don't see that in um, misting nozzles. It's like fog, you know? It's so it's such fine particles. It looks like this. You don't get that with misting nozzles. That's what you want. And these droplets are about five to 50 microns. Um, here we can see my roots. They're really healthy. They're all white. Um, and I got this on a timing five seconds every five minutes, and you can adjust that um, to what your plants like. And I think, I think that's about right. Um, so the next part of this um, is the solenoid. So this is probably the toughest part of the whole thing. You have to buy one of these, and it just comes as this, like a, this plain thing. It's like uh, 10 bucks. And you see these little tangs coming off of it. So what I did here is this is a power strip for an old hard drive. And it happened to be that one of these wires was 12 volts. And so I'm using the negative or the ground and then the 12 volt. And I just connected those in there. Uh, this goes all the way to a controller. You can see that the strip is down here. It's I Omega. And the controller is an Arduino. And you can actually see it through the box, so I'm not gonna bother with opening it up. But um, the Arduino, to be able to use this Arduino with a power strip or a power, you know, and any, any sort of electricity, you need to have this secondary module called a relay. So you then take the, like, um, you see, I, I cut that. This is kind of not the best way to do it, but I cut the power cable in two places at the end and then one once in the middle. So in the middle, the signal's interrupted because the relay is open. And in order for the signal to reach the end of the solenoid over there, you have to close the circuit. 
And that's what these relays do. And uh, when you program this Arduino to talk to these relays, you hear these relays opening and closing as you program them. And as they close, um, then the circuit can flow through the rest of the cable. So then the end goes up there. So that's how it works. Um, and it takes a little bit of uh, fidgeting with to try to figure out exactly how it works. Um, if any of you are struggling with this, let me know. Um, but I recommend buying one of these modules. These uh, eight, eight relay modules are pretty nice. Uh, before I was working with like a single relay because it came with this kit and it was pretty complicated. You had to solder in a diode and use a breadboard and a transistor, a um, resistor, and you had to follow this whole schematic. So all of that is is already done inside of these little uh, circ uh, these little modules, so it's much more convenient to just buy one. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. You just have this solenoid um, talking to the relay, which is controlled by the microcontroller, which is an Arduino. In my case, it's this you know knockoff Arduino called an Allego. Um, okay, and then. Lastly, um, the drainage system. I have this crappy drainage system right now, but this is my drain and I'm using, I, I started with misters and I, until I learned that they weren't that good. And so I'm repurposing the water pump to drain my system. So I have that on a timer and there's different ways to, you know, program this stuff. Um, I'm using these wireless plugs that you can plug into, connect them to your phone and set them to schedules. And that seems to work pretty well. So I have, um, I have this thing draining once every eight hours. <clears throat> okay. So the next, next, um, thing to think about are ingredients or like, uh, the, the nutrients that you want to add into the system. And this is the most creative element of the process to, to, whatever you feed your plants like this these plants are literally that stuff it's just that stuff the seed just converted all this liquid that i bought from the store and in, into that and eventually it's going to be a tomato and i got some beans here and some chard i'm really just experimenting at this point at some point i'm going to uh, scale up the system with a bigger light and a grow tent but I'm just experimenting at this point. Um, so the nutrients are, I think the most important element of all of this, um, to figure out what you want to, what you want to feed your plants. And you really have to start doing some research into how plants work. Um, but if, if you're not, if you just want to get started, just buy this, this stuff, flora, I don't know, flora, go or something like that just hydroponics things i'm i added these hydroponic liquids in there and i'm using these salts at the moment i'm not sure if i'm going to continue using those but you you want to get the um the salinity up to a certain point and you can you can look that up you know what what kind of salinity does a tomato want etc um, and i'm also using uh some something called biochar it's like liquid liquidated biochar and um and and i'm using it this is a mixture of biochar and algae digestate uh and that's supposed to promote microbial growth and here you split into this um two different philosophies of growing plants do you want a do you want a microbial environment and microbial environments are beneficial in that they have all these trace micronutrients that we probably don't fully understand yet. Um, so if you have like an ex extraordinarily healthy soil, your plants are going to taste delicious. Um, but, you know, if you're using just these three containers, you're not going to get a very sophisticated flavor profile. So the question is, how do you how do you how do you get the the benefits of having a microbe rich environment um 
how do you promote certain microbes? Um, or, or how do you do it all in a sterile environment? Is there a way to take all of these, all of these uh, micronutrients that, that, um, that these microbes provide and, and feed them into your plants, uh, first sterilizing by killing all the microbes? Or, you know, I, and I haven't explored this yet, but can you just add microbes into your, your system without any soil? <clears throat> and I'm not so sure about this. Uh, it's something I have to further explore, but um, it's an interesting question. So if I add microbes in, will my system go anaerobic? So will the microbes become like negative bacterial and kill the plants? Or, you know, do I just keep on adding in live microbes? I'm not exactly sure how this works without soil. And I'm thinking that perhaps when using aeroponics, it might be optimal to not use microbes. This is something I, I have to explore. And it's something that I urge you to research and study and think about and try to um, incorporate these micronutrients into your plants however you can whether it's through biology or whether it's through um, chemicals and so my the reason why i'm using these salts here this is called c90 and it's just dehydrated ocean water and in the ocean uh, you have the entire spectrum of the periodic table exists in the ocean in these trace minerals so when you dehydrate ocean water, you have these trace minerals in the salts. Um, and so it, it might just be though that these trace minerals are so, there's so few of them that your plants can't really utilize them very well if it comes in the salt form. These uh, C90, this C90 product, a lot of the times is just administered to soil. Um, so Another way to take the advantages of the ocean and incorporating them into your system is by using brown kelp. So this is something that I'm thinking about is buying um, brown kelp meal. And this stuff comes from Arcadia, north of Canada. Um, and the ocean there is pretty clean. So, um, and because there, there's not very many boats uh, going in and out of that uh, territory. It's also not in the Pacific where you uh, have the problems with Fukushima uh, irradiating the Pacific Ocean. Um, but so using brown kelp, one way to maybe do it would be to take the brown kelp, put it into a, something like this and brewing it, teeing it, steeping it and trying to pull out all these nutrients from the brown kelp and, and getting them get, uh, getting the water soluble um, nutrients from the brown kelp into your into a liquid form. You can also buy something called li liquid kelp. You have to be very careful about um, like which one you, you choose on. You have to make sure that it's you're getting the benefits that, that you're looking for. Um, so, Liquid kelp might not wor might work. I'm not sure. These are things you have to explore. But um, the ocean is a way that you can put into these trace minerals, these micronutrients into your into your system. Um, and once you start thinking about this, uh, you can get even deeper into it with soil. And at some point, um, I might be talking about. Uh, vermicompost and soil and how <clears throat> you can get a lot of these benefits from vermicompost. We might be able to do something with vermicompost and making it inert. I still haven't tried this myself, but <clears throat> like a vermicompost extract. Vermicompost uh, is compost made from worms. And uh, depending on, you know, what the source is, you know, like what were the, what were the worms composting? There are better and worse things uh, to for the worms to compost that are like for plants. You, you don't, you know, that 
you can have like really simple vermicomposts and you can have very complex, rich vermicomposts. They're not all created equal. So that's another route, you know, vermicompost teas. <clears throat> and you could probably incorporate those and make them inert by heating them up or something prior to using them uh, without, you know, it definitely won't damage your plants. Uh, the question is, you know, are you, are you receiving uh, a lot of benefits? So these are just some uh, early, th these are just some initial tips, you know, on how to get started and um, what a proper aeroponic system is and, and um, you know, what are some different routes that you can go in uh, trying to raise some healthy uh, plants in, in an automated system. So anyways, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to um, talk with any of you about this. All right, thanks a lot for tuning in.